Okay, verse 4. Abide in me. Abide means live. I'd like to say it this way. Find the source of your life in me. I'm the source of your life. Abide in me and I in you. Describing a union. I'm in you, you're in me. Abide in me. I in you as the branch cannot bear, forth, bear fruit of itself except you abide in the vine or live or get your life from the vine. No more can you except you live, abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me and I in him brings much, forth much fruit. Listen to that. Whoever lives, abide means live. Whoever abides or lives or dwells in me and I in him brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a person lives and the source of their life is Christ, a person that's born again, has had a life, eternal life imparted to them, brings forth fruit. He says so here. Whoever, he that abides in me and I in him, brings forth fruit. Much fruit. Now, we haven't yet defined the fruit. I think this might be a good place to do that. We haven't yet defined what the fruit is. Is it grapes? Is it apples? Is it uh, watermelons? <laughs> what kind of fruit is it? You know, I've got a, I've told you this before, and I apologize if you've heard my stories before, but let me just tell it, plug it in here. I've got trees on, on our property. Uh, some people like them, some people don't like them. I, we got a lot of complaints because they're too close to the road. I've got to keep them cut, so truck drive, you know, guys that drive these trucks, the cab sits up 20 feet in the air. They drive by and they're mad because the branches touch the top of their cab. And anyway, uh, we planted those trees because April went out to Walmart one time and they were on sale. And she came home with these trees. I, she said, I let each of the boys pick out a tree. And uh, so we're going to plant these trees. And, and each, you know, one of the boys. And Elliot picked out an apple tree. And listen, I want to tell you something. That apple tree, I mean, you, it, it, was, uh, uh, it was just because there was a little tag on it that said apple tree. It did not look like any kind of apple tree I'd ever seen. It didn't even look like a tree. It looked like this barren, dead. I mean, it didn't look like much to look at, you know, by appearances. It didn't look too whippy. <laughs> but I planted dutifully... My job is to dig the hole <laughs> and plant the trees. So I did that. I dug the hole, planted the trees, and we watered the tree. And a year later, no fruit. Didn't look any better. It didn't look very exciting. But as the one who uh, was invested in it by, uh, you know, by virtue of the fact that we planted them, I kept them watered. I kept watering. I kept watering. See, we read about uh, the washing of water. Where I kept watering, kept watering. Another year went by. Still no fruit. And did you know it took, uh, I don't know how many years went by, and finally one little apple, it's back there on my desk, it's all shriveled up now, but one little apple appeared on that tree. And I was so excited because, you know what that told me was there was a life inside that tree that caused the fruit to come out, even though it didn't look too exciting at first, even though it didn't look too wonderful. So, you know, I kept on watering it. And, you know, now the last couple of years, it's just had fruit all over the place because it's got a life on the inside it's got a life, a source of life, if I could say it this way. It's got a tree DNA. It's got an apple tree DNA which causes it to bear fruit just because of the virtue of the life that's on the inside. That's the way Jesus describes believers. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches, and because you're plugged into me, you've got my life in you. And you can't help but bear fruit. And what kind of fruit is it? Well, it has to do with what kind of life is on the inside of us. Now, luckily, we don't have to use our imagination. Look in Galatians chapter 5. Briefly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this. Just I'm just going to touch on it, just so you can get this idea. Here we have the language of fruit used, and uh, I want to make the suggestion that this is the same kind of fruit Jesus is talking about. Galatians chapter five, verse twenty-two. Jesus says, "I in you, you in me. Whoever lives and abides in me bears much fruit." And how is it, by the way, that we're connected to Him? Uh, it's not physically. Because he's not here physically. It's not mentally. He's not a mind. It's spiritually. It's spiritually that we're connected with him. By his Holy Spirit. You notice he keeps talking in these chapters about sending the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings the reality of his life into our life. He makes real that idea. I and you and you and me. We are spiritually connected to him. Paul says it this way. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. And now Paul uses the language that Jesus used in John 15, and he says in verse 22, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit, notice that language, the fruit of the Spirit, in other words, this is the fruit that the Spirit produces on our branches, in us as branches. First of all, love, joy, peace, 
long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Um, do you know, when I read these descriptions, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, to me, the first thing that comes to my mind is this sounds like Jesus. Did you know these are the attributes and the character attributes of Christ Himself? But he doesn't, Paul doesn't say, let me tell you how great Jesus is. Listen, he's got all these great attributes. He says, this is the fruit of the Spirit, meaning in your life. See, this is the fruit that Jesus produces in our life. The first one is love, and that's kind of an all-encompassing. You could say these are just aspects of love if you wanted to. The first one's love, and, and I don't want to miss an opportunity. I never do uh, like to miss an opportunity to read to you the, be the best uh, text on love just to call it to your attention in uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Ampl Anton, would you get that? Ampli I was going to say amplified. <laughs> Anton, uh, and give it to me in the amplified translation. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. And I'd like to have the amplified translation. This is a perfect description of the kind of fruit that is produced in our life. The first one is love. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love is never envious nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious and does not display itself haughtily. Love is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly, does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us. Now here's a great one. I know you're all going to love this one. God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. That always rubs everybody the wrong way. <laughs> Nobody ever cheers about that part of it. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. it pays no attention to, the, to a suffered wrong. Did you know when Jesus is talking about branches producing fruit, this is the kind of fruit He's looking for. And notice, by the way, that He doesn't describe it as particular behaviors, but character, characteristics, character traits. This is a character trait, love, that's a fruit that grows on our lives and our brain. This is the kind of fruit He wants to produce in the world through us. And let's just touch on that again. Does not insist on its own rights or its own way. How about that? That kind of rubs, you know what rubs the wrong way? It rubs the flesh the wrong way. Because our flesh wants to insist on its own rights, its own way, right? That's my parking place. That's my seat. You know, that's my, that's my, that's my, you know. <laughs> Just think, what a beautiful thing it is when you don't insist on your own rights in your own way. It is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. You know, I've, sometimes this makes people really angry. <laughs> not touchy or fretful or resentful. Like a person said to me one time, well, I'm touchy and I'm fretful, I'm resentful, and I can't help it. <laughs> well, what you're saying is, uh, you could be saying, I'm carnal. That's what my flesh is. And everybody's flesh is like that. But Paul didn't say this is the fruit of the flesh. He said this is the fruit of the Spirit, right? On the inside. It's the life of Christ growing up. Now, why does he tell us this? Why is this in the Bible? It's not that we can produce this by willpower. It's that he wants us to be aware of the fact that that's, what's, that's the life of Christ that's in us by virtue of our connection with him. If you're aware of it, then you can uh, allow it to show up, allow it to... Uh, have its way. See, really, the truth of it is, when you act, when you make actions, you choose what kind of action you're going to take. And He wants you to make the decision to choose to act this way and not being fretful and touchy. See, if somebody, if somebody does something or says something to you that rubs you the wrong way, the natural fleshly reaction is to react in kind and to say something catty back to them. You know, you punch me, I'll punch you. Right? That's the way the, the flesh acts. But, before you do that, stop for a moment and realize that He's the vine, I'm the branches, and there's a, def a different kind of life on the inside of me. And rather than punch you back in the nose because you punch me, I want to not be touchy, fretful, or resentful, and I want to pay no account of the evil done to me. That's a different kind of life. That's the kind of life Jesus showed to us.